Okay, adding to the Psycho ripoffs, we have a female character, I don't even remember, Annie, maybe that was her name, whatever, being killed really early, even though she was sort of being established as the main character. I don't know. It didn't really work for me. Maybe it does for some people, but, you know. The... I couldn't really stand the guy with... I, Bill, was that maybe his name? Why did he live for so long? You know, the, the arrows and... It was decent enough foreboding, you know. You know, arrows hitting then, and then, what, two people later on are killed with arrows. And I think someone says, yeah, when she gets, you know, surprised by him with the arrow, you know, she says something like, I'll nail you to the wall, and that's kind of what happens later on. Maybe my camp experience was different from that of Americans, but my camp counselors were never this fun. I don't know, maybe they just completely turn that off once the kids arrive. Anyway, I actually, before watching this, I thought that there would be kids at the camp. I didn't realize that it was all counselors. You know, I used to think, why is, you know, Mrs. Voorhees killing other children? You know, it makes sense once you realize it's just counselors, because, you know, she... It's like getting revenge over the fact that her kid died, and the... You know, she wants to close down the camp, so no one else will be killed. And she does this by killing people. Okay, I'm not saying her logic is perfect here, but you can sort of understand why. Also, Betsy Palmer, I think that's the actress's name, she has a pretty decent psycho glare. I didn't really buy her as a, a killer, necessarily, but the psycho glare ain't bad. Did anybody else find it kind of funny when she does the, the shining thing, you know, using an axe to break through a door, sticks her head up, and then... Okay, I don't have anything funny to say, so we'll just move on. That, yeah. I... I don't know if I was really surprised, but I did note that there... In this, there is no killing with a machete by the killer, anyway. I think it is the machete that is used to chop Voorhees' head off, but... No hockey mask, not even the bag. So really, one of the only iconic things from the franchise that is present here in the first film is... Excuse me. That would be my cell phone. And yes, I'm a Terminator fan. So anyway, I... A lot of people seem to think that this is about that, you know, if you have premarital sex, or if you smoke weed, or, you know, if you do things like that, you will get killed, you know, the wages of sin is, is death. But the commentary track and the documentary on DVD, or one of them at least, Sean Cunningham, I think, says that that's really not the idea because the Alice maybe whatever the one who survives isn't you know completely virginal and such so really the idea is bad things happen to good people and we don't know why you know and that is an infinitely more interesting idea than you do something wrong, you will die. You know, God will send a psychotic woman to kill you in a more or less creative way using items that can be found around a campsite. No. Everybody 
is at risk of something happening to them, no matter how good a person they are. And that is a really good idea. And I would say that's a fear that lingers in the back of the head that, or, you know, deep down in our subconscious anyway, of anyone who considers themselves a good person. You know, am I good enough? Could something bad still happen to me? You know, the idea is really great and actually much better than the film itself, but whatever. So Mrs. Voorhees shows up at the very end to deliver some exposition really forcibly. It's like a horse tranquilizer shoved down the audience's throats or something. And it's incredibly obvious that she's the killer, you know. Oh, I'm not afraid of the killer out there, and, you know, oh, I'll help you. <laughs> oh, my son drowned. Yeah, okay, we, we get it. You know, she might as well have shown up with I am the killer tattooed on her forehead. But Betsy Palmer didn't want to do that because, you know, she might have trouble removing the tattoo and she wanted to work after this. I do kind of like Jason's emerging from the water at the end. Apparently, even back then, they had figured out that he would be a mongoloid, a void, Christmas. And, yeah, very, very creepy looking kid, and one thing though, he's still a kid. I mean, Lost told us that your hair grows in the afterlife, but apparently this kid has not grown up. It's a little strange. It has been 22 years. The possessed Mrs. Voorhees really wasn't that good the first time you saw it, and then they just kept abusing the crap out of it. I mean, that was way too much for a really short amount of time. What was it, four or five times in less than ten minutes or so? That was too much. And there is, of course, a ton of POV shots, but this is the only one I've seen so far. I'm holding out, calling it abusively extensive, because maybe it gets even worse down the line. So, The axe to the head, the face no less, was pretty good. And it looked pretty good. The chopped off head of Mrs. Voorhees was also not bad, even if the continuity is a mess. You know, read the goofs section on IMDb. I liked that you saw someone getting killed in the bathroom, and then another person comes to the bathroom, and you have that kind of sense of, you know, you're, you're sure that they're gonna get killed right there too, but then, you know, that worked well. I didn't really understand what the hell she was doing in the canoe there at the end. You know, why was she out on the water? Why did she sit down with her back turned to the only logical location from where Mrs. Voorhees could return when she wasn't absolutely certain that she was dead. That's pretty stupid. Is it funny to anyone else that the fight at the end is essentially a chick fight? I mean, you've got... one of them grabs, you know, the hair of the other one, you know, the head. They bite each other's arms to the, get loose. Yeah. That, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but that was interesting. You can somewhat tell that this was not really planned to be a franchise. Because a 13-year-old might not be the most interesting 
slasher killer, you know, and apparently him appearing at all in the nightmare there was, or the memory, however you want to read it, that was Tom Savini's idea and it was like a last minute addition, which is not to say that the effects weren't well done. I like how he also looked kind of dirty and, you know, I mean, he didn't look as pruney as you'd expect someone who's been underwater for 22 years to look, but he did look quite creepy. That might be more or less... It. Well, the, the leader, the owner guy, I think he was, you know, one of the first guys we see bare-chested. When he, you know, sort of returns to the camp and then gets killed, it was pretty obvious that he was just there to get killed. I mean, when you see him in the, you know, the cafe, the only possible reason they could be following up on his character at all is for him to die. I wonder why the date, or is it just the fact that that happened to be the day that they came to work? I don't want the first day of my new job to be a Friday the 13th, and it's not because I've just watched this movie, it's because why would you jinx it, you know? Why not just... Let's wait the weekend, you know. Make it a Monday instead, not a Friday the 13th. But anyway, when I first watched it, you know, when that date came up, I was thinking, wait, this is all going to go down in just, you know, a single day? But, yeah, I guess it did. But yeah, so I guess the entire series owns its name to the fact that the first day of work for these camp counselors happened to be an interesting date. Yeah. One can wonder why Mrs. Voorhees did not kill the owners and or maybe try to sabotage the land so that it couldn't be used for camping for future purposes, other than, of course, the readily applicable and available explanation, which is that there'd be no movie. And maybe she does kind of like the whole killing thing. So yeah, I think that is it. Those were my thoughts on Friday the 13th. I hope you enjoy them. I'll see you next time.